The Stamiad versus a Japanese Spitz. How in the world can you tell them apart? Well, they look so much alike, but what are their differences and similarities? Now, Stamiads have a lot of different pronunciations for their name. The way that I pronounce their name, Stamiad, is based on my influences, which are with the professional dog show circuit in the United States. Now, I have been around this breed for about 40 years. The Samiad nickname is Sammies, and they are extremely energetic dogs. When Yeti and I film these episodes, it's normally at night, after he's walked a lot of miles and had plenty of playtime. So he's tired and a little bit sleepy, more calm and relaxed, but normally, Yet he begs me every single night to play, throw his Buddha toys, wrestle with him, and he pulls me around the house. He even herds me. My first Sammy, Chewy, used to herd me for me to bring him out to get ice cream. Now a Sammy's playfulness level comes in really handy because they were bred as reindeer herders and to haul a lot of heavy equipment. Sammies are also very notorious for herding you to bring them on walks. They love walking and they love pulling you on a dog sled or if you're on rollerblades, they will joyfully pull you. Where they originated in Siberia, Sammies would sleep on their owner's beds, curled up right next to their owners and even on top of their owners to keep their owners warm. Now the Japanese Spitz looks very similar to Yeti except so much smaller. They are a loving family dog and they too want nothing more than to be inside with their owners. The Japanese Spitz does get along well with other dogs, pets, children, and even other people. Children though have to be respectful of that dog. The Japanese Spitz has a moderate energy level but a high strong playfulness level. They do have a much smaller size than a Sammy. They're larger than Pomeranians and they weigh about 10 to 25 pounds, making those dogs the perfect apartment dwellers. Additionally, they're very trainable, very intelligent dogs. Now, both breeds of dog, the Sammy as well as the Japanese Spitz, have very similar coats. There's no trimming at all required for either dog. Now, both breeds do have self-cleaning coats and they go through epic shedding periods at least twice a year. For Yeti, I do know that he sheds 365 days a year. It's just those two times annually that he goes through epic shedding periods where there's like a whole dog sized mound of fur that comes off of Yeti. And the Japanese Spitz are no different. However, the Japanese Spitz dog does shed less than you think, probably based on their size being quite a bit smaller than Yeti's breed. And the Japanese Spitz only requires once weekly grooming which is much different than a Sammy's grooming needs, which are daily to about every other day for at least an hour and a half each time. When I groom Yeti, I use a few different types of brushes because I start off with one brush that's a little bit more widely spaced with the, the tines of the brush. And then I move into a slicker brush, which is more closely spaced. Other people may use a, a comb. If you're looking for an active dog, both the Sammy as well as the Japanese Spitz dog, they do not disappoint. The Japanese Spitz do have plenty of energy, but they don't need a lot of exercise. They require daily walks and a few play sessions throughout the day. After that, they'll be kind of tired. Now, Sammies, on the other hand, <laughs> they normally never quit because of their high energy working dog demands. They were bred to pull heavy equipment across the far great north of Siberia. They do stop long enough to get some water, food, and ask you for more playtime. Oh, and they do sleep occasionally. And both breeds of dog excel at agility. Both are very friendly breeds of dog and both are extremely intelligent. It just depends on if you want a big dog or a small dog. The Japanese Spitz dog aims to please. They're really easy to train if you find the right motivation for them. A great ball, great game of fetch, an enticing item to chase, a really yummy treat. And both breeds need short training sessions. Short, very focused training sessions. Use play in with the training. Both breeds need to end those training sessions on a very positive note. For the Japanese Spitz, socialization is really important. If they're not socialized, they do become quiet and withdrawn and shy and nervous around people. Allow your Japanese Spitz to explore the world on their terms. They should be able to walk with you when you go on a walk so they can sniff every tree and every blade of grass, every single fire hydrant. That exploring will help with their confidence building. Now with a Sammy, <laughs> Sammy's 
race into a room demanding everyone's attention. Whenever anyone comes over, Yeti is always the first to go greet that person. And he does that by licking them and hugging them, paying attention to them, telling them play with me, and dropping the tennis ball at their feet, having them throw it for him. He demands attention right away. He doesn't bark until he's excited. Sammies are known for their talkative nature. You want to learn what they're trying to tell you. Most of the time, their talking is about play with me, bring me outside, I want a belly rub. I, I need a, a rub. I need a near rub. I need a chest rub. I need to play. Mom, play with me. Mom, give me treats. Mom, bring me outside. Mom, mom, mom. They don't bark at you for any mean reason, but they are very talkative. Don't be fooled by the Japanese Spitz's size. They can make wonderful watchdogs. They're very loyal to their families and their aim is to keep their families safe. Even though they're registered by the AKC, the American Kennel Club, they're not officially registered as a dedicated purebred. They were admitted due to their similarities with other breeds, like the Sami, the American Eskimo. They were admitted to the Foundation Stock Service Group. Sammies are recognized as working dogs. They're right up there with the Huskies and the Malamutes. This dog loves to work. Yeah, they're always such a stunning sight to see on the dog show floor. With their beautiful white poofy coats and this beautiful Fluffy mane. Sammies, though, never stay still long enough for you to cuddle. Japanese Spits are lovable and intelligent dogs. They serve all kinds of owners. They're a companion dog for an active family, and they do make wonderful lap dogs. Do you want someone to come with you on your daily adventures? You can certainly bring a Japanese Spitz along. Japanese Spitz are ready for everything, and it's easy for them to get the attention they crave. They make the best well-mannered, cute little fuzzy dogs. They show you nothing but love and affection, and they will happily and gladly cuddle with you wherever and whenever you want them to cuddle. Sammies are also lovable and cuddly creatures. They're big poofy kids at heart. There is not a single mean bone in their bodies. They are not the guard dogs. They love everyone and everything, except squirrels and skunks. Please keep them away from a skunk. Now, Sammies aren't the best dogs for first time dog owners, and I know that they're absolutely adorable and that most people would love to have a Sammy, but let me explain. They keep you on your toes, even if you're an experienced dog owner. They're difficult to train, but that does not mean that they're not intelligent. It just means that they were bred in a different way to accept different types of training than what a new owner may typically be learning or be used to. Sammies don't respond well to a simple sit, stay, calm down command. Yeti very rarely ever stays for me. Now, if I have anything enticing to make him stay, then he might stay. Otherwise, Yeti is always doing his own thing, and I have to learn to work with that because a Sammy normally trains their people rather than the people training a Sammy. Now potty training a Sammy is tricky too. It took me seven months to potty train Yeti and it took me about as long to potty train my first Sammy. They get so distracted. They often don't give you a good cue that they're about to go. If you're looking for at a Sammy and thinking that's such a cute dog but I've never owned a dog before, you might want to consider owning a Japanese Spitz. And the reason is because they are excellent dogs for first-time dog owners. Not only are they smaller sized, making them good for apartment dwellers, but they have a calm, easygoing nature. They're easier to train and their size is a little bit easier. For another breed comparison video, be sure to check out this one. We'll bark at you next time.